Hi guys, Squirrel here, and welcome to Berlin. Berlin Airport, look at this. I've actually been here, and I can tell you, it looks accurate. It actually looks like this. Phenomenal. This is my first look video of the bus. The bus, developed by TML Studios and published by Aerosoft. Now, if you know TML Studios, they have a history of making bus simulators, with, of course, Munich Bus Sim back in 2014, I believe, Fern Bus Sim 2016, and more recently, Tourist Bus Simulator in 2018. Now, according to Steam, the bus describes itself as the next generation of city bus driving simulation set in the capital city of Berlin on a realistic one-to-one -one scale. In this, my first look video, guys, I'm going to take you through the good, the bad, and the ugly of TML's latest bus simulator. You may have already noticed that there are various passengers waiting to get on board the bus. Some of the modeling, in fact, some of the, some of the style of the game may be familiar to you if you've already played a TMS, TML sorry, bus simulator title. Uh, it is, of course, built on the Unreal Engine, as was uh, Fernbus and Bus Simulator, I believe. And essentially, on the Steam page, it describes itself as the ability to transport passengers on different lines across the city with various buses. Manage your fleet and team up with other drivers online. Now, I should point out that this is released as an early access product, and currently there is no facility to manage your fleet or team up with other drivers online. So in some sense, that's a little bit misleading until they've added that into at least the early access product. But anyway, it releases on Steam on the 25th of March, and when you launch the game, it specifically pops up with a disclaimer stating that this game contains limited content and features, serious performance issues, may often crash or not start at all, you may lose save games or progress, and it will contain a lot, and in their words, repeat a lot of bugs. So, in every sense of the word, this is an early access product, and TML is being very upfront about what you're getting into. So do bear that, do bear that in mind, if after watching this video, you decide to go ahead and buy the game, this is very much early access with more to come. But we'll talk about what's to come a little bit later on. What I want to start with is just pop it into the main menu where we'll have a look at how we kind of pick a route and a line that we're going to drive today. And then we'll drop into the bus and I'll show you around the controls and we'll go for a drive and see how it actually looks. So here we are in the main menu of the bus. And before I forget, I should point out that I was sent a key for this game from TML. So I've received my key for free. Now you can see on the main menu that the economy section is disabled. This is work in progress, as is the multiplayer and mod support. There are, however, editors which we'll have a look at in a second. Firstly, I want to quickly show you the options. Now, if you've played a TML bus sim game before, you will certainly recognize some of the style, if you like, of the way things are set up. Over here, you've got your general options and then the Scania Citywide. There's currently only one bus in the simulator, and that is the Scania Citywide, Although there are two variants of it, an articulated 18 meter and a non-articulated version. The control setup is, well, standard if you've played TML games before. You basically can have multiple mappings to the same thing. I struggled a little bit with this, uh, particularly the assistant didn't work for me because my wheel and my pedals are not by the same manufacturer and the assistant just got very confused about that. And in the end, I had to go through and set up my axes and buttons independently. Also, I've noticed that I can't map any buttons on my wheel because if I've tried to, it seems to just want to reset my brake and throttle. So, you know, early access, this is a pre-release build. Maybe they'll fix that soon. So the controls are what you would expect. The graphics options are pretty minimal. There are options here for, you know, motion blur and lens flare and that kind of thing and various quality settings, which I've got on Epic. Uh, when you're watching today, I'm using a 3090 graphics card uh, and a 5950X CPU, so bear that in mind when you see the sort of performance that you see. But again, they've already said, expect performance issues. Minimum options in terms of audio, I have all the music turned off. The music that you're hearing is just some other music that I've dropped on, which won't get me uh, copyright strikes or anything like that. Uh, and then there's some game options where you can set the, you know, the language and the units and uh, whether you want tooltips on. Camera options, camera is uh, annoyingly limited to about 90 degrees field of view. Uh, I would like an option to go a bit wider on that, but it doesn't seem to be possible. Uh, and then back on the main menu, 
Well, this is where you have uh, a choice of one map. So if we go to, actually go into editor first, because I want to show you the the line editing. Now, in terms of Berlin, this, this is what they've mapped in Berlin so far. And bear in mind, it's one to one scale. And perhaps this is one of the things they have got right is the map that you get to drive around in one-to-one -one scale is actually pretty good. Uh, it's very representative of what you actually see. And you even see proper brand names out there like Aldi. Um, there is currently just the one line, which is uh, this line here, which goes from Flughafen Tegel, which is Tegel Airport, to Alexanderplatz. And if you basically switch the line, the only, I, I don't know if this is just a bug or not, but you can kind of see it flashing up some icons here. So I'm wondering if perhaps there's more lines available here, or maybe they're just work in progress. I don't know. Uh, you can then go into the route itself and you can have multiple routes on the line. So this is the route one, route two being the reverse of it. Uh, this goes from the airport down to Alexander Platt. And then route three, if you, if you look, is actually a cut down version just about half the route here but what you can interestingly do in the route editor is you can basically disable some of the stops you can edit the lines and the routes quite effectively and you can even if you right click on some of these mark them as important so this is quite a cool thing also if you go into the timetables um, it has a very detailed timetable planner which you can scroll through and you know if you've ever tried to do OMSI timetables you'll you know you have to edit massive text files uh, with this, it's just a simple point and click affair, which should mean, you know, once it's supported that anybody could create interesting timetables potentially. And then down here, you've got the tour buses, which, you know, I've not really played with, but again, you can see that it's pretty flexible in, in how you can set things up. You can, you know, zoom in and you can add stops and take stops away. Um, all very flexible. Perhaps one of the, one of the better parts of what I've seen so far is the way that lines, routes, uh, and timetables are editable. Now, if we go into free play mode, of course, as you would expect, there is only one map at the moment, so we're going to Berlin. And there it is, there's the vehicle choice. You've got the citywide 12 meter and the articulated 18 meter. We'll just take the 12 meter out today. Control mode, um, I have it on realistic. Essentially, it turns off all of the automation side of things. Uh, and start directly from bus stop down here is not implemented yet because you can't actually start from the depot right now. Uh, then you've got the line in the tour so what we'll do is we shall pick a well you but that's another thing you should mention when it comes to the weather the time of year has an effect on the weather so if you're set set yourself in january uh then if you have precipitation it will more likely to be snow than anything else and similarly the the daylight hours will change etc so we're just going to go into june and we'll pick a start time now the start time dictates the tour that you get and if you remember, um, tour one was the full tour, tour two was the reverse, and tour three was the kind of halfway house. So we'll just go forward to 7.54 a.m., which will put us on tour three, which was the, uh, the cut down version. But even now, you can actually, it shows you where you're starting, but you can actually disable, um, sorry, pick your starting points uh, even here. So you don't have to do the full thing. You could start further down at the train station if you wanted to, which, you know, again, pretty flexible. Like, I like that stuff. And then finally, the weather. Um, the weather, you can fix the weather down or go for dynamic, which will just kind of flow through the different weather systems, which are what we'll pick. I'll talk about this later about future features planned, but one of them is to have live weather. So it will, I guess, look at what's going on in Berlin or maybe let you, let you pick any city around the world like you could with OMSI. Um, and then it will pull the weather from online and inject that into the sim, which will be quite cool, but not currently supported. So let's click on start and then we'll go through the bus startup and go for a drive. Well, of course, I went for dynamic weather, so the game went, you know what? We'll give you some rain, okay? Summer showers it is. So here we are in the game. You can see passengers are queuing up already, and uh, we'll just go over here and we'll jump into the bus. So we walk over, we click on the door, and it will just let you in. Now, in terms of modeling, you've probably seen the Scania-type buses in, um, in TML Studios games before. I don't know if they've directly just lifted this from the other bus sims maybe maybe not but you know the modeling is pretty acceptable we'll press the c key and that will jump us into the into the bus driving position i was going to say cockpit then but this is not a flight simulator although arguably you can probably call it a cockpit first thing i note is track ir is supported in the game which is great to see so we've got that and what we want to do is start up so i'll put the ignition on and then i'll hold the ignition 
You'll notice that the bus immediately started and knelt down, bowed to the passengers. Um, and that's that's pretty much the startup procedure done. What I want to do now is just flip around some of the uh, controls. So if you press the 5 key, it brings you down to the sort of lower panel here where you can control the aircon. Incidentally, although these buttons actually move, I don't believe that the passengers are in any way bothered about the temperature on the bus yet. I would imagine they'll implement that again later. Uh, these buttons here are disabled. That one, camera observation, I don't play with. Parking brake is here. Uh, some of the lights on the bus and then open in various latches. Press the 6 key. Brings us up to the left control where we can indeed turn the lights on. We're going to do this stuff in a second. I just want to walk you through and give you a sense of uh, what's clickable and what isn't. And then the 7 key brings you into the main dash. Uh, the 8 key brings you over to uh, where you can control the doors and the gear and that kind of thing. Lift up and lift down, which, you know, does actually work. If you press lift, sorry, kneel up, kneel down. Actually, it's because the door's locked. Normally this, if I shut the door, let me just shut the door. And then I press the down button. You can see that, you know, it is active. The fully operation. Press the 9 key, brings us over to the computer system, which we now need to start up. And then we need to enter the tour number, and it handily tells us the tour number of 67103. We press enter, and the passengers will immediately start getting on board. Because out on the front of the bus, let me just make sure the passengers. Oh, there you go. Out on the front of the bus, it actually now enunciates on the front bar where we're actually going. And one of the passengers wants a ticket. The money, the economy system is about is going to be built in the future. But you know, so this money doesn't really go anywhere. But it doesn't let you, you know, purchase tickets and deal with the cash. So single ticket, single ticket, AB, uh, three euros. Press on the bar key. Issues a ticket, take the money, four paid, we need to return one euro, and the passenger goes away happy. So, I've not noticed any passenger interaction other than that, so they've not spoken to me, they've not, you know, asked things. That's what you get currently. I expect that that will change at some point. Another thing that keeps catching me out, I press the one key to go back to the main camera position, and that's actually the two key. The one key is an external camera, so that keeps catching me. Right, turn the aircon on with G, so we'll turn the aircon on, uh, close the door, like that. Uh, we've got to put some wipers on. So yeah, the wipers work accurately. Don't know if it asked me to put the lights on, but I'll put the lights on anyway. Because uh, it is raining. I don't think it did, I think it asked you at night, but not when it's raining. We'll go for intermittent, I wonder. Right, hold down the brake, and then put it into gear, put it into drive. And then press the accelerator. And of course it doesn't want to go because I put the parking brake on. Now normally in this kind of game, especially in the real engine, when it starts to rain you get a lot of reflections and that's when you start to see performance issues. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, but so far it seems to be coping reasonably well. I think on the whole the frame rate seems to be pretty good. However, I do notice uh, stuttering, particularly as you transition the map. I think what's happening is it's loading the map, the next sector of the map, and you, you kind of feel these little stutters. Um, but performance issues is one of the things that's listed as a problem and definitely is one of the things on the roadmap. So, you know, bear that in mind. The AI is... Hmm, how do I put this? One of the bad things, I, out of good, bad, and ugly, um, you know, I would class the whole controller setup as just being ugly. It really is ugly. It's very unrefined controller setup currently. Uh, the AI is bad. Um, it's aggressive at the best of times. And you can see I'm being brake tested quite a bit. You'll often find yourself driving along and then you'll get to a T-junction and somebody will just come barreling out of the T-junction straight into you. Or when there's traffic merging, that's when you tend to see a lot of problems. Traffic merging can be horrible. You know, it is what it is. I've dialed the traffic density down because on 100%, it is just horrid. Uh, so I've, tr I've dialed it down to about 70%, I think. And that seems to make things much more manageable. Uh, it does knock off the indicator, by the way. If you put the indicator on, you turn the wheel. When it straightens up, it, it disengages the indicator, which is... a uh, 
a nice little touch. In terms of the mapping, as you probably see when you're looking out the window here, it's like graffiti on the walls, one-to-one -one scale. When we get into the more urban areas, you will see people walking around. I think perhaps one of the things, as well as probably the route editing, the one thing they've done well is the mapping. It is, when you look out the window, quite believable. Uh, in terms of its scale, in terms of the AI cars on the road, uh, the parked cars, people walking down the street. Normally there's more people walking down the street. I don't know if that's a factor of the weather, or we'll start to see more of that later. But normally, you know, it, it actually feels like a like a living, breathing place that you're driving through, which is a very, very welcome change. So, oh, there you go. There's people walking around in shorts now. Yeah, okay, so it was just where we are, I think. Uh, you'll see garages. I don't think that was a, a BP. A Burger King. So, like, real names. Here we go. Here we go. Now, I expected him to dive on us. Actual brands is, is, again, a refreshing thing. So, I presume they've got licenses for this stuff. So, this is definitely the better part of the game so far. Is This is Berlin. And if you know Berlin, I'm pretty certain you will recognize a lot of this. And it feels like Germany definitely a plus for that we're about to come up to a stop i think so we'll get the indicator on shortly and you you perhaps heard the the bus announcement it was very quiet but it was announced in german now you can hear the brakes and retarder extremely loud perhaps too loud i would suggest i think the audio is one thing that needs working on now, I don't see them touching their phone on the on the control. I don't know if it's behind me on the outside of the bus, but I'm definitely not seeing any of that. Let's attempt to pull out here. Okay, that was uh, easier than usual. So even little things like that, where the road kind of kinks in and becomes narrower, because of the one-to-one -one scale, they've got total flexibility to do that and look at that little, little bike as well the actual driving experience in terms of the road network is, is pretty good people aren't you know clothed in raincoats or anything like that or umbrellas uh, I guess that can come later they're very much like they're out on a summer's day um, but you know we can forgive all that stuff driving physics on the bus is it feels a lot like firm bus which was to me uh, it just feels too soft and spongy. It's not... It doesn't feel... How can I put this? If I drive a truck, say, in SnowRunner, and SnowRunner is obviously an, an extreme example because they've done physics very well in SnowRunner. Uh, if, I, if I drive the truck and I brake, I feel the weight of it move forward. I feel the, you know, the mass of the bus lunge. When I turn a corner, I feel it tipping. I don't get that sense. I never really got that in Firmbus either, but I don't get that sense of um, good driving physics. I think the physics are okay, but they're not what I would say are in the good category. Um, so there's definitely room for improvement there. And to be fair to TML on the roadmap, it does say that uh, driving physics is on the list of things to be improved. I think we might want the middle lane. I can't remember what lane we want here. That looks like an MAN truck, but without the badging. I'm surprised they didn't get a, uh, a license from MAN. If they got a license from Burger King and didn't get one from MAN, that's quite surprising because they've done MAN stuff before. Now, the roadmap itself is uh, effectively a Trello board. I don't know if you're aware of Trello or not, but it is a Trello board that you can go and look at and you can see. And it's split into three phases and we're currently in phase one. And what's not clear is when the different phases are going to be worked on. Okay, I'm not sure what that was for. Certain beeping sounds. It's not clear when the phases are going to be worked on. So, we're currently in phase one, and I'll tell you about what they're planning for phase one. Look at this area here. This looks uh, this looks pretty, pretty authentic, isn't it? This is nice. Okay, let's open the door. You can see there's not a huge variety of um, 
models of AI at the moment. Passengers are squeaking a bit. I think the rain's stopping. Uh, so phase one is basically a single player focus. So this is where I have a, a point to contest with the Steam description currently saying that you, know, you can play with your friends. By their own admission, phase one is a single player experience. So, you know, for the foreseeable future, I would suggest that you're not going to see multiplayer. Uh, so you, it allows you to drive a bus at any time of the year in a vehicle of your choice, but there's only one vehicle. Two, if you include articulation. Passenger transport with ticket sales is planned in phase one, so we're already doing that. Uh, boarding and deboarding, we're doing that. Weather and seasons, well, yeah, to an extent. Uh, line editor, route editor, travel plan and tour editor, they kind of got that stuff. Uh, live weather sync is something they want to bring in. AI buses is currently not in the game. Uh, so that would be, you know, you pick a you pick a, a tour or a line and then the AI would supplement everything else with uh, AI buses. That's not in the game yet. Profile management, again, not in the game. Performance optimization, localization and bug fixing, plus a few other bits and pieces. Uh, and also livery mods are planned for phase one. Notice livery mods. So when they talk about mod support, even in phase one, they only mean allowing you to have liveries, basically. Can we go down that lane, I wonder? Uh, so not actual buses, not actual vehicles, just reskinning stuff. Uh, this is going to be interesting. I'll indicate. Oh, I got away with that. Let's turn the wipers off now. So yeah, no, the lack of modded vehicles um, or even any other vehicles being released in Phase 1. So if you buy this game now, what we're basically saying is you can only drive these two variants of the Scania bus. You will not, we will not be getting any other vehicles in the game and there will be no modded vehicle support in Phase 1 for however that lasts. So bear that in mind if you're deciding to take the plunge and buy this game. Okay, we're getting some frame issues here. <sighs> Definitely got some frame stutters then. But I think, like I say, I think it's scenery loading. And it, oh, you want a ticket? There we go. Press the 9 key. Uh, what do I want? Single ticket AB. Three euros. Give me a dosh. Looks like the weather's bright enough. So then it moves on to phase two, and the problem with phase two is we have no idea when it is. Phase two could be six months from now, it could be 12 months from now. There's really no indication of when phase two will happen. Phase two will bring an MAN Lion City bus. It will also bring map modding tools for Unreal Engine 4. So that will allow at least third party map creation, which will, you know, will be a fantastic thing, because I'm pretty certain that everybody will be bored of driving you know around the same area of, of berlin in the same two buses by the time phase two kicks off it'll also bring in multiplayer chat a multiplayer lobby system multiplayer free play and multiplayer voting system so a lot of multiplayer stuff being mentioned there don't really know how that's all going to hang together it's not clear whether it's going to be server-based or peer-to-peer or play with your friends like somebody hosts and the rest join really have no idea it could just be that you just drive around in the same city and do different lines i mean i kind of get the need for the, the desire for multiplayer in a bus sim but it's kind of redundant in a way because you can't really drive together like the whole point is that you drive separate lines so you just kind of you're like ships passing in the night you're just oh hi there's jeff right well i won't see him for another hour so i don't really fully get the multiplayer experience in a game like this, but maybe that's just me. There'll also be full controller support. Not really sure what that means, to be honest, full controller support. Certainly, they need to revamp the controller mapping support right now, because it is clunky and um, in need of an update, I would suggest. There's also going to be then AI trams brought in and Steam Workshop support. That's all planned for Phase 2. Again, no idea when that is. Phase 3 brings a VDL Satea uh, single and articulated buses, an economy system, 
So right now, you're, you're basically buying and selling, you know, what, you're selling tickets and taking change, right? But you're doing it for no other reason just than that's what bus drivers do. In phase three, they plan to bring an economy system in. So that allow you to create your own bus company. It'll allow you to buy and sell vehicles, hire and fire staff, deal with repair expenses on buses, and generate income from ticket sales. So phase three is where you get to the point where you're not just driving you know, a bus just to experience bus driving, but you're actually layering on top a sense of you're owning a fleet of buses, perhaps, which we've seen in, in other bus simulation games before. Uh, and you're, man you're then growing the company, managing a fleet, and trying to turn a profit from taking passengers' money. Which is an interesting one, because, you know, they're going to have to realistically bring in some kind of government contracts because most bus lines run at a loss anyway let's face it in real life they're all government supported and government backed there's no way to just make money in a bus uh without it, it, but they, you know the overheads costs expense are just way too high so they're gonna have to bring that stuff in which again i've seen in other bus simulators the idea of being given contracts and expand your bus network you know for more money that's great that works i've seen that work so I hope they do that kind of thing. Uh, but there's no mention in, in any of these phases, there's no mention of third-party vehicles or modded vehicles. There's no mention of anything being added other than uh, the two Scanias, the MAN and the Citea. Like, So even after phase three, which I don't know how long that is, and early access games, you know, <laughs> there's early access games that have run for seven or eight years. Some are even still in early access after seven or eight years. Um, I won't name names, I'm sure you know who they are. But the point is, an early access game is a very... Unless you couple your milestones with dates, there are no expectations over when things will happen. So by the end of phase three, whenever that happens, we'll have a bus game with a few vehicles, uh, multiplayer support, maps that can be created by third party people, uh, better controller support, better AI, better performance, live weather, and that's basically it. Now, one of the big attractions for OMSI, for example, was that it had the ability to to get third-party vehicles, some modders to get their hands on stuff, to create vehicles that the developers don't create. And that was a big attraction, it really was. Liveries just aren't enough at the end of the day. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm I'm looking for that stuff. I'm looking for the bigger picture. I'm also hoping that the mod map support will also bring with it everything outside of Berlin. So the map modders could, for example, create a London network. I mean, I would love to see a London network implementation. Um, but I accept that, you know, TML are not going to be able to do everything. They've got their hands pretty full. That's fine. You guys develop the base game let the community or third-party companies build other maps build other buses that's where we want to be what we need from a game like this is the base game to be rock solid perform well give us the flexibility we need and give us the mod support we need i don't know if i'm really feeling that right now from this game i don't know if they're going to go in that proper direction um I've not really seen them do that with any previous TML games, so I'm, I'm reluctant to think that they will with this, but maybe they will surprise me, I don't know. I just want to see the game opened up so that we can get full vehicle and map modding. I'm sure everybody does too. One-to-one -one maps is... I mean, that's... You know, you're a truck and ATS are like 1-to-19, 1-to-20 ratio. You know, what we're saying on a one-to-one -one map is if it takes me... 10 minutes to drive from one stop to another in this game that's how long it'll take you in real life like that's one to one scale it's a big effort from any map modder though it's, it's a lot of work but it really pays dividends frames you can see probably I can certainly tell are stuttering like crazy so uh, again I think I think the map loading is what causes the issues so yeah there's, there's definitely issues here in summary, that's the way we want to be, in summary. What do I think about this game? Is it worth you splashing your cash on this game right now? 
I would my in my humble opinion, and you know, you can see what you can see. I've tried to tell you what's in the game, everything that's here, everything that they're planning. In my humble opinion, it is too early yet. It's too early to buy into this game. You can go and spend your money now, and you'll be able to drive up and down Berlin in these two buses, and you'll probably have a good time. However long that will last, I don't know. But you're also got to accept that this, you know, the game's perf not performing brilliantly. They may crash. They may bring features in later that destroy your save games. You are very much early, early access. I think too early, personally. I think, you know, it's running fairly stably for me, but there's just not enough meat on this bone right now. There's just not enough here. I'm enjoying driving around Berlin, don't get me wrong. And I'm enjoying driving around in this bus. But I'll probably play it for like 10 hours, 20 at most. And then I'm just going to kick back and wait until they drop more content. That's where it is. That's the reality of it. So if you want to get in and you want to kind of help them, you know, support the game, if you like, support the developer, support the publisher, uh, help them to build this, then, then yeah, you know, go for it. But go, go in with your eyes wide open. Know what you're getting into. I can't stand when we see people buy a game and then refund it after an hour and rip into the developer and publisher about how it's buggy and there's stuff missing. It's like, they literally tell you this. <laughs> They're really upfront about this. So you can't knock them for that. They're being very open. But like I say, in terms of the average Joe in the street, it's probably a bit too early to, uh, to buy into this game, but you may want to accept that and do it anyway. And that's your money, your choice. I'm just giving you, you know, what I think. I think maybe, I, I, you know, if I was, bear in mind I got my key for free. If I was going to buy this game, I'd probably wait this year, after like six months after release, just see where the game's going, seeing if those, that Trello board's moving, seeing if those uh, features are being added, um, what rate, that you know, how engaged they are with the community, how receptive they are to uh, changes and feature suggestions, things like that. That's what I'd be looking for. I, I am hopeful. We are really lacking, like, a really good bus simulator. I would like to think that this might turn out to be that bus simulator. I just, I just don't know. I think I've seen too many failed projects in my time. <laughs> so I'm, you know, reluctant to tell you to go out and buy this right now. That has been my first look video. I hope you've... Um, appreciated my first luck and uh, my thoughts on it where it's at where it's going what you see uh, it's definitely it's definitely got potential it's just whether that potential you know bears fruit but you know I think we'll leave the video here because otherwise it's going to be too long so I shall bid you a farewell please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video until the next time take care guys and happy driving